Hello and welcome to another installment of Conquering My Collection. Um, I recently um, picked up a number of films from the movie line. Uh, they've, they've been releasing films on streaming for a, a number of years and have been, um, in more recent years, acquiring um, films to be streamed and actually released on physical media. And they kind of started out a bit slow, but they seem to be really picking up momentum now and they're releasing some big um, world cinema titles coming up this year, including worst person in the world and drive my car i believe so they're really kind of picking up steam i think in terms of some of those bigger world cinema acquisitions and some of the stuff they release and i'll probably do a separate video on this so i'll just leave that talk for that so yeah forget that but movie they're doing some interesting stuff in terms of the films that they're selecting uh this is a film by uh emma seligman and it is shiver baby now, my, my initial kind of read on that was um, um, Shiva Baby, right? But it's Shiva. Well, not, 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 not like Shiva, like it's called, but like just Shiva, which is the term for um, not um, a funeral, a Jewish um, mourning um, ceremony process where um, the Jewish people will, I think it's a week, seven days, right? where they um they kind of they all they all gather and congregate um to kind of mourn the passing of one of their loved ones it's called a shiva and so i thought it was shiva and shiva baby it's kind of fell off the tongue a little bit better in my head when i first saw the, the cover in hmv but it is in fact shiva baby and uh when i say it, it sounds like i'm saying shiva as in it's cold this is a very short film 77 minutes long I believe it started its life out as a short film and was expanded to feature length. This came out um, 2020, 2021. It's a very recent film. And it stars Rachel Sennett as Danielle, who is a college senior who, at the beginning of the film, is having sex with her sugar daddy um, called Max. And uh, so it's like, oh, well, there we go. We're, we're, we're starting the film off with a sex scene. And I'm just going to get the uh, the characters' names up so I don't forget. And I watched it a couple of weeks ago, um, but I wanted to make a video to talk about it because the, the film is fresh in my mind, but the, the characters' names, not so much when you watch so many films. Yeah, Max is the, the guy's name. And uh, and then Danielle has to go to attend this this day-long shiver. And when she arrives with her parents, and, and it's kind of, yeah, it's very much a black comedy in a lot of sense, almost a black comedy, claustrophobic thriller in a lot of sense and it is there's very there's very mixed tones throughout this film which i found to really hit a sweet spot of something really memorable for me so and, and the, it really begins when i mean it, it's kind of funny at the beginning when she the the, the sex scene at the beginning is, is a little a little bit of humor there but when danielle turns up to the shiver and she says to her mum just before they go in wait mom who died <laughs> <laughs> it just kind of sets the film off on the right foot, I think, or at least the right foot for what you're about to see. And so the whole movie takes place inside this house during the shiver. Danielle gets there and, you know, she's not really following the right path. And, and it plays into what I can only assume is, is drawn on real life influences from the director in terms of the pressures in Jewish families on like success career like where are you going to school what are you studying what what's your your ambition you know what have you got set up and danielle just doesn't really have any of that figured out of course she has her sugar daddy and she is earning money that way um but uh so that's kind of the pressure on danielle is already starting the minute she gets there and then she looks over across the room and sees max her sugar daddy <laughs> and he sees her and it's an oh, oh my god moment. And then her parents like, hey, come meet this guy, Max. And right from then, the film does not let up. Like, it absolutely does not let up on the the tension of Danielle being there. Like, <laughs> with this guy that she's sleeping with. And then his wife turns up uh, with their small, like, infant child. <laughs> um, and then her parents are, like, kind of, like, just talking about this and talking about that and then she turns around and runs into Maya I believe was the character's name and uh, this this young girl of the same age who it seems like they're friendly but Danielle has been ignoring her they even used to be an item they were together at one point so now Danielle has to deal with like her ex-girlfriend Maya played by Molly Gordon um her sugar daddy her parents um all these relatives are kind of like like 
kind of pruning her and kind of prodding for 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 answers to all these questions of what she's doing with her life and stuff and and it just keeps escalating it just it just keeps spiraling you know and the mind games between Danielle and Max because they're kind of pushing each other in a way when they realize what's going on and you know basically Danielle has told Max that she's going to law school and she's doing this sugar daddy stuff to to pay her way through law school but then he realizes she ain't going to law school um so he feels kind of like you know um <laughs> betrayed in a way and, and kind of a bit pissed off and then she realizes that max you know has a family and she feels a bit like you know <laughs> scorned that you know so that they, they, they of course they're, they're keeping secrets from each other but those secrets have just exploded and evaporated in front of their faces and now they've got to try and deal with the fact that they're in the same room with a lot of mutual family and friends and the score to this film is like very like of a horror movie <laughs> And there is a claustrophobia to it, and it's been it's been very much repeated a few times about this film. I certainly wouldn't pretend to coin it myself, but I've seen a few people say on Letterboxd and on Twitter that this film is like the true uncut gems, or this is like a, a more stressful experience than uncut gems. I wouldn't agree with that. I think uncut gems is is like a, a film that's almost twice as long as this. It might even be twice as long as this film. And it ratchets up the tension so much that by the end of the film, it's like, it's going to just, you know, explode everywhere. This one, it kind of, it brings the tension up and you're like, oh my God. And then it, it simmers down a bit and then it turns. And I really love the the flow of this film and the, the one location setting for the majority of the film, which really worked well. Um, I was so invested. I was so engaged. There was um, a particular moment that felt like something out of an Ari Aster film. I guess we can say that already after two movies, but like it felt like an Ari Aster <laughs> moment where things were really just going off the deep end. And I gotta, I gotta give credit to the actress who played Max's wife um, because it was, you know, she did a really good job in a kind of, um, I don't say unsympathetic role, but like it's a difficult part to play. And I think she did a really good job. And I can't, uh, Diana Agron, I think. Yes, Diana Agron. So she plays the the wife of Max, Danielle's sugar daddy, and I think really the main the main kind of threat here is 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 the wife going to find out? And there's a few things that happen along the way where it's like, oh my god, I think she might is she going to piece that together? Is she not going to piece that together? And there's the these little things that get dropped in that could be picked up by people, you know, if they think to pick them up, and you think, okay, the all the ammunition is in that room. It's whether someone picks it up and accidentally loads it into a gun and then realizes what they've got in their hands. It's that kind of thing. And I just, um, I thought it was fantastic. I really um, loved the film. And it's one I'll watch again and again, especially with the, the short running time. I'm looking forward to showing it to Connie. You know, it's just, it's really fun. And Rachel Senna is phenomenal in the film. And actually Molly Gordon, who plays uh, Maya, equally, well, I would say equally, I mean, she's very good. You could almost say equally good, but Rachel really carries the whole thing with her, I think, un unique personality. I think that character was cast very well because she, she really suits the role and she has a real kind of spunk and kind of, um, kind of energy and attitude that really fits the character and drives the whole movie forward, I think. And there's some really interesting stuff going on psychologically as well. So there's, there's, there's lots of ways to enjoy this as this kind of like claustrophobic, oh no, oh my God, holy shit kind of thing, a bit of a thriller almost. There's like the black comedy aspect where you're finding humor in places you probably shouldn't. Um, the drama of it and then just the, the kind of, it's offbeat as well, you know, and just super enjoyable. So yeah, absolutely love this film. Uh, it came with a good Q&A, which is one of the, we're getting into that era now where special features are just like Zoom interviews. <laughs> But it's the, the lone um, feature on the disc. Movie aren't really putting themselves forward as kind of a, a champion of special features, which in a way is understandable. Um, I think that uh, maybe the more steam they pick up, perhaps, uh, in terms of being a physical media label, that might change. But they do put extras on there, just not a lot. But it was a really good Q&A with the director, and that was was really informative for me. So I was, I was glad that it was included, even though it was a, you know, not ideal in quality um, Zoom interview. You know, if, if that's all we can get, then I think, you know, I, I would take it. The The only thing that was a shame for me is there's an audio commentary 
on the US release. And now I kind of want that because I really would like to hear the audio commentary. So it's just one of those, but is it worth, you know, paying another 20 pounds to get an hour long audio commentary? I don't know. But regardless, I really, really enjoyed um, Shiver Baby and I would highly recommend it. Um, to anyone who is considering it, it was on sale on Amazon for seven ninety nine, so that's when I kind of pulled the trigger on it. So I would, um, yeah, I really like movies releases, and this one was a winner for me. So thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. Hey, you're all right by me. <laughs> Apart from the fact he throws cans and calling into a tree. <laughs> yeah, he's really cool. Yeah, he's really cool. Not quite as cool as you. <laughs>